Now I'd like to briefly address the question of where consciousness comes from and fundamentally what consciousness is. Well, one thing we need to know about the hierarchical structure of natural law, again shown in this chart, is that the deeper we go into the structure of reality, from macroscopic at the top of the chart to microscopic at the foundation of the chart, every stage from macroscopic to molecular to atomic to nuclear, the properties of consciousness are becoming more vibrant, more lively, more evident. For example, the property of intelligence is more lively at deeper levels. What does that mean? It means that the laws of nature are increasingly compact. The laws of nature are the orderly expressions that govern the universe. There are laws of nature that give nature its regularity, its repeatability, its intelligibility to the human mind. So the laws of nature are the orderly principles, the intelligent principles that uphold the functioning of the universe everywhere. At deeper levels of natural law, the laws of nature become more compact. At the level of unity, the self-interacting dynamics of the unified field at the basis of diversity, all the laws of nature become absolutely compact. The unified field, as we saw before, was the unified source of all the laws of nature, the unified source of all the intelligence that governs the universe. Therefore, the unified field must be the most compact field of intelligence in nature. Intelligence becomes more concentrated at fundamental scales. Dynamism, another characteristic quality of consciousness. Consciousness is not just intelligent, it's alert, it's dynamic. Dynamism is increasingly vital at more fundamental scales. This is because of the uncertainty principle, the principle of increasing dynamism at smaller scales. That's why nuclear power is a million times more powerful than chemical power. Chemical power results from the manipulation of molecular structure. Nuclear power comes from the manipulation of nuclear structures, which are a million times smaller, a million times more fundamental, and therefore according to the quantum principle, a million times more powerful. The level of super unification, the unified field, is a thousand million 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 times more fundamental and more powerful than the nuclear force. The energy density, the dynamism at the super unified scale is virtually infinite. And there's another quality of consciousness, the quality of self-awareness very fundamental quality of consciousness, this property also grows at deeper levels of nature. A superficial force like electromagnetism has none of this property of self-awareness. You could take two beams of light, two flashlight beams, and you can try this experiment at home. You can cross these beams of light and they'll pass right through each other with no scattering, no awareness of each other's presence. However, at a deeper level, the level of unity, the unified field, is highly aware of its own existence. It responds dynamically to its own presence. This is called the nonlinear or non-abelian property of the unified field, the property of self-awareness, self-interaction, self-referral. It's a vitally important fact that the unified field is aware of itself, that it interacts with itself, because there ain't nothing else down there for it to interact with. And therefore, it is its dynamical self-interaction that sequentially brings forth the diversified structure of creation, and so forth. If we look systematically, for example, at this chart, which you cannot see very well, I understand, but it shows in detail that the mathematical structure of the unified field from which you can derive its fundamental qualities rigorously. Qualities like dynamism, intelligence, self-awareness, or self-referral. And so we have a very profound quantitative or qualitative correspondence between this unified field and what we call consciousness, and so forth. I'll come back to the subject. But it's very important, I think, to conclude a startling reversal of what has been assumed to be the case. What has been assumed to be the case 
is that consciousness is a purely superficial outcome of electrochemical processes in the brain that is a purely macroscopic epiphenomenon of the macroscopic flow of electricity in the brain. What we're starting to see from this chart is that the qualities of consciousness are not superficial but are fundamental in nature, that are ubiquitous in nature, that are everywhere in nature. If you scratch beneath the surface of life, beneath the molecular level, into the realms of quantum mechanics, you already see that we're living in a conscious universe. Quantum mechanics and experiments that confirm quantum mechanics and quantum measurement theories show that what's called local realism is a false assumption. The idea that there is something physical, something localizable, that has some claim to reality, that has been overthrown by quantum mechanics and the experiments that support quantum mechanics. The quantum reality is a non-local reality. So what we call material has no place at the level of the atom, at the level of the nucleus. Quantum mechanics is the dynamics of intelligence, the interplay of pure potentiality. The qualities of consciousness are becoming more expressed. The qualities of matter are becoming less expressed at deeper levels. So consciousness and its qualities are not an emergent phenomenon of the macroscopic brain. Consciousness is a fundamental phenomenon that is ubiquitous in nature, that is everywhere. Of course, the macroscopic level, the material world that surrounds us, is just the classical tip of an immense quantum mechanical iceberg, just the superficial crust of existence. And yes, on this superficial level of objects, nature does appear to have a rather inert appearance and inert behavior and lifeless behavior. And after 300 years of scientific investigation of billiard ball mechanics and celestial mechanics, physicists became quite entrenched in the belief that we were living in a dead universe and that consciousness is only a fluke of the universe whereas I'm claiming consciousness is fundamental that it enters existence really from the inside out so the old story was consciousness arises as a fluke of the universe some happenstance freak coincidence of chemical interactions on the early earth in the early atmosphere in early oceans resulted in the emergence of self-replicating molecules which grew over time in their integrated complexity until multicellular organisms and mammals and so forth were born. And then suddenly a miracle occurs. Magically the meat we call the brain suddenly becomes conscious and that's the origin of consciousness. That view of consciousness as a purely emergent phenomenon has never worked from the standpoint of philosophy nor from the standpoint of science. Neuroscientists have never been able to locate that magical spot within the brain from which consciousness comes. It doesn't come from a magical spot within the brain. It comes from within every cell in the brain and from the DNA at the core of the cell and the molecular and quantum mechanical behavior of the DNA and the synaptic gaps. Consciousness enters the physical world from the quantum mechanical level, from the inside out. So the old view of consciousness was that consciousness was a fluke of the universe. The new view, based on quantum mechanics, is that matter is a fluke in an overwhelmingly conscious universe. And as soon as you scrape away the crust of matter and delve into the quantum mechanical realm of the atom and the nucleus and so forth, the world becomes alive, increasingly conscious and dynamic, until you arrive at the unified source of creation, the unified field of all the laws of nature, which is a purely non-material field of self-aware intelligence, an infinitely dynamic field that gives rise to the emergence of our universe and an infinity of universes. It is the nature of this unity to give birth to diversity, an infinity of simultaneously coexisting universes is the modern view that comes from quantum cosmology based on the discovery of the superstring. So I think it's probably obvious to this audience 
that this fundamental field of intelligence of nature that gives birth to the universe and gives rise to millions of species here on Earth and sustains Earth's ecosystems, these intricate webs of mutual interdependence and mutual interaction, it must be clear that this infinitely dynamic, infinitely creative source of life and source of universes must itself be a field of pure life, not a field of death, not a field of inertia, but the field of pure life, pure consciousness. And that is the proposal that I would like to state and support during the course of this talk and quickly turn to the practical implications of this new view of the universe and new view of consciousness.